What exactly is tyrosine? Tyrosine is an amino acid. It is non-essential, meaning that your body can produce it from other amino acids, but um, there's a conditional essentiality to tyrosine that we'll get into. So it's a non-essential amino acid first discovered in 1846 by the German ch chemist Justus von Liebig. The name tyrosine originates from the Greek word tyros, meaning cheese, as it was originally isolated from the protein casein found in cheese. Now, from isolation to functionality, what are the main key roles that tyrosine plays in the body? Number one, it's necessary to make thyroid hormones. Number two, it's necessary to produce dopamine, the pleasure hormone or the pleasure neurotransmitter. You need it to make adrenaline and noradrenaline. These are your stress hormones, sometimes referred to as epinephrine and norepinephrine. You also need tyrosine to make melatonin, and it's very key for a group of mole signaling molecules in your body called kinases, tyrosine kinases. Very, very important group of molecules related to cancer and cell growth and many, many other functions. So tyrosine is a pretty important amino acid overall. Now, if we look at these chemical pathways visually, it'll make, hopefully make better sense for you. Um, but here you can see in this diagram, tyrosine right here in the middle. Tyrosine is a non-essential amino acid predominantly because you can make tyrosine from this amino acid right here, this one called phenylalanine. Also found, both of these found in protein. That's where you, where, where you eat protein. So predominantly meat, certain nuts and seeds and other things. Now, in order to make tyrosine, the body has to have adequate vitamin B3, iron, folate, and uh, a, sub, a substrate of folate called BH4. Um, so in essence, to turn phenylalanine into tyrosine, we need these B, B vitamins and we need iron. Once we get to tyrosine, it's used to make the following chemicals. One is L-DOPA levodopa. Now you may have heard of this term before as it relates to Parkinson's disease. This is a common medication that's given in Parkinson's disease. They give L-DOPA. Why? Because in these patients, their ability to produce dopamine is diminished or damaged. Those cells in the brain that make dopamine become damaged, and so in Parkinson's disease, people start to develop tremors and nervous system dysfunction. So tyrosine is the precursor to making dopamine and its precursor L-DOPA. So again, this is a medication that's sometimes used in patients with Parkinson's disease, but you can't make it internally without tyrosine. Now, in order to convert tyrosine into L-DOPA, again, you can see up here where it says cofactors. Cofactors just means nutrients that uh, run the biochemistry of this conversion. So you need vitamin B3, iron, folate, vitamin D, and omega-3. So very, very important. You know, many of you are thinking, how, you know, do I need tyrosine? Do I need to supplement with tyrosine? Um, you know, if you're, if you're going to think about doing that, you might also want to ask or think about, you know, are my levels of these nutrients also low, right? And then from L-DOPA, we can make dopamine. And dopamine requires vitamin B6, that's PLP, as well as iron. And you remember dopamine's function predominantly is in our reward centers of our brain. So dopamine makes us feel happy and fulfilled. Um, dopamine also regulates motor muscle control. This is why people with Parkinson's and other dopaminergic types of diseases develop tremors. Um, from dopamine, we can make norepinephrine and epinephrine, or noradrenaline and adrenaline. And to do that also requires cofactors, vitamin C and copper, to make norepinephrine. And for folate, or for norepinephrine to epinephrine requires folate, something called SAMI, which is abbreviation for s methionine. It's a, um, it's a type of amino acid um, that uh, is critical for that conversion. And then as well, you need magnesium. 
So why are these, as dopamine's important because of its reward motor control, why are these two important? Norepinephrine and epinephrine both play a role in our stress response. And so how do you cope or adapt to stress? Well, your body produces these hormones that, that allows your body, allows the mechanistic uh, aspects of your body to upregulate blood pressure and blood flow so that you can adapt or deal with the stress at hand. A lot of people develop, especially with chronic inflammation, develop an inability to cope or adapt to stress. And this is one of the reasons why. They're, they've burned through these nutrients and now they're, they're left with an inability to actually make stress hormones effectively so they don't deal with stress. Now, also beyond the synthesis of stress hormones, and dopamine, tyrosine is also essential for producing skin pigments. So you can see up here, tyrosine as a chemical goes through several different types of reactions to make the pigment melanin. So in this case, eumelanin and over here on the, on the other side here, pheomelanin. These are just different types of melanin. Remember, melanin is what makes our hair color. It's also what gives our skin color. So the, the pigment of your hair and your skin is dependent upon tyrosine. There's some research, if you watch my show on graying of the hair, there's some research that shows that tyrosine for some people with premature graying can actually be very helpful in, in hair coloration. Now we also know that tyrosine plays a role in thyroid hormone production. So as you see here in this diagram, over here in the blue, you've got tyrosine and then chemically converting into T3. That's triiodothyronine here, and I've underlined it. And then from T3, we make T4, thyroxine. So if any of you have hypothyroid illness, you know, hypothyroid, it's interesting how many doctors ever measure tyrosine to determine whether or not it's a cause or contributing factor in low thyroid. I've not seen it yet. I, I, I do it all the time, but I haven't seen uh, a single patient in 24 years of practice come to me uh, from their endocrinologist where they've had hypothyroid, where tyrosine was ever measured as a, as a means to try to identify why their thyroid wasn't working properly. But the T and T4 and the T and T3, so when we look at thyroid hormone, T4, which is thyroxine, and you can take the drug thyroxine as uh, there are a number of different preparations like, like Synthroid or Levothyroxine. Um, but the T in that T4 is tyrosine. The four in that T4 is iodine. So in essence, thyroid hormone is tyrosine, the amino acid, plus four molecules of iodine. That's what it is. And T3, much the same. T3, the T is tyrosine, and the, the three is, is iodine. And to get from T4 to T3, we have to take away an iodine, and that conversion requires selenium, which is why so many of you uh, probably have read about selenium's role in thyroid hormone, because it activates thyroid hormone. T3 is active thyroid hormone. It's the one that does most of the metabolic functioning and most of the metab metabolic work. So again, you can't make thyroid hormone without tyrosine. So very, very important key amino acid that your body isn't going to do well without. So now let's answer the question, who might benefit from taking tyrosine or eating more foods with tyrosine? Well, what I'm going to show you here are, are the supplementation in the human trials and human research studies on benefits of tyrosine. So the first category are people that have improvements in cognitive function, cognitive performance. Their brains work better. So you can see here, tyrosine supplementation has been shown to enhance cognitive flexibility and working memory, particularly when people are under stress. Remember what I said earlier about tyrosine and its functions. I said that you can't make epinephrine and norepinephrine 
without tyrosine. These are your stress hormones. So under stress, when people take extra tyrosine, when they're under stress, their memory improves. Um, same thing is during sleep deprivation. So where, where a lot of the research on tyrosine has come from is in the military. When they put these soldiers under intense stress, they, they make them stay up longer. They give them tyrosine to see if it improves their performance, and it does. We also have research on stress resiliency. Evidence suggests that tyrosine may help mitigate the adverse effects of acute stress by sustaining neurotransmitter levels. Of course, the neurotransmitters we're referring to dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine, thereby improving performance in challenging environments. We also have mood regulation. Some research indicates a potential role in alleviating symptoms of depression and anxiety. Remember what we said about dopamine. Dopamine is the hormone that can bring us happiness and bring us satisfaction and, 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 and a sense of peace. Exercise performance, we got preliminary studies have linked tyrosine supplementation to improved endurance and reduced fatigue during prolonged physical activity. 